Why did you stay with him? I stuck with him because I, I love him. I believe he's worth it because he's a human being. And I just don't believe in writing people off because they have mistakes. I believe you fight for the good. And I knew in order to restore honor to him and to our children, that, or actually, to restore honor to our children, the best thing I could do is help restore honor to their father. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. So is this what you guys do on a Saturday night? We read to each other the parts we really like. And so, but see a little paragraph like that? That, that'll get you through the night. That'll get you through the night. Oh, yeah. And the day. That's a good line. It will get you through the night. Yeah. Yeah. We're in Scottsdale, Arizona. People have made their house available to us to stay in at no expense. Come on in. Oh, great. Okay. Come on in. So you're going from safe house to safe house. Yeah, they're loners and they're nice. This is gorgeous. Hey, welcome to my crib. <laughs> All right. Well, here's my bed made of memory foam. Who gets this room? I called it. Yeah. You know, the flowers are for him, the little <laughs> feathers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a TV, as you can see, and very nice cabinets to put all of my stuff. How much stuff did you bring with you from Colorado? Just clothes. Do you like this more or less than the last house? This is like a chill house. Our house in Colorado Springs is like a home. Yeah. We're going to be able to stay in this home for four months, and then we don't know where we'll go. Today we're driving to the University of Phoenix. I'm going to interview for a job there to walk people through the online program for the University of Phoenix. And this is incredible because I'm 51 years old and I've never interviewed for a job in my life. I feel like a 19-year-old or a 16-year-old. And so it's kind of exciting because I put my tie on thinking, ooh, I'm going to a job interview. Okay, so let's get ready for the interview. Yeah. Why should I hire you and not somebody else? Oh, there's nobody else that's had my experience in motivating people and encouraging people to do what will improve their life, like me. Okay, so what do you worry they're going to ask you? The, the touchy thing is going to be, why did you get fired from your last job? Or why did you quit, resign from your last job? What are you going to say? I'm going to say that I had a sexual relationship with someone other than my wife. And that was a conflict, of course, with church, and you can't. You don't think they know that already? No, this guy won't know it. My next application, if this doesn't work out, is to drive a city bus. Because they only require a high school education, which in the secular world, that's all I have. Because my bachelor's degree is in English Bible, which is worthless in the secular world. Okay, good luck on the big interview. Okay, thanks. Bye. How'd it go? Oh, it went well. I'm feeling a little bit like George Costanza right now. Um, <laughs> you, Cause you know how George Costanza always felt like his interviews went well and he always made such a fool of himself. I have no way to measure this. I have no measurement system. I don't, I've never done this before. So you think you're gonna get the job? Yeah, if they don't Google me, I'll get the job. If you'd Googled me, you would think I was Adolf Hitler or Idi Amin. Or worse, gay. <laughs> That's worse in some circles. In some circles, they'd rather have me be a murder bird than be gay. So, so, yeah. Everybody say, prayer, prayer. stimulates the Holy Spirit's activity. All right, so Ross and I were walking along through the neighborhood, praying for houses, praying for businesses. 
And then it kind of dawned on both of us simultaneously that we were standing in the middle of, of a gay bar's parking lot. And then the guy said, hey, are you guys together? And I said, yeah, no, no, we're not, we, we are, but we aren't, you know, it's, now here's what's interesting about that. Two or three days later, I was downtown with a staff member and the thought went through me, I wonder how many people will be at that place in the middle of the day. And as we drove by, a man from our church came walking out the door and I pulled the car over, jumped out and I said, hey brother, and named him. I said, I said uh, don't worry, uh, it's okay, we're just here to help you in the name of the Lord. He dropped his head and started sobbing. We got him in the car, they walked him through a process that informed the wife and child and now I might report to you that marriage is totally healed, this guy's steady, this guy's stable, this guy's doing great. He really got a powerful deliverance. When you were up there in front of that church, how come you didn't say, I have issues with my sexuality, I have issues with drugs, I have these weaknesses. Why didn't yeah. you admit that then? Um, well, I, I didn't think I could because I was supposed to be a representative voice for 30 million people. I was leading a church of 14,000. There were all kinds of wonderful people looking to me for leadership and I thought it was my responsibility to just get it worked out. How did all of this start? Uh, I did some same-sex sex play when I was in the seventh grade. And then all that blew up when I was 50. And I had to analyze myself. Am I a heterosexual, a homosexual, gay, straight, bisexual? What are you, Ted Haggard? But I've wrestled with it and fought with it and argued with it. My sexual addiction was no different than, than somebody with struggling with alcoholism. And I know many alcoholics that preach, don't drink, don't get around booze, don't have anything to do with it, and then they lose their sobriety, and then they start again. You were given a choice. You could have gone gay, but you've actually been forced to choose between being gay and being evangelical, and you're choosing being evangelical. Well, I am who I am. I'm an evangelical, and I have struggled and continue from time to time struggle with same-sex attraction. But I was never a hateful preacher. I was never an angry preacher. I was never an anti-gay preacher other than saying that God's, and I still believe this, even though I'm a sinner and even though I'm weak, God's best plan for human beings is for men and women to unite together and children's best opportunity to grow up in a healthy way is to grow up in the home with their biological parents. The agreement had to do with his participating in a process of spiritual restoration that would um, be aimed at returning him holistically to uh, health and wholeness as a man and to holiness as a Christian. When an arm is broken, you have to put a cast on it. And it may not feel good, but the only way that thing's going to heal is restriction. That's what Ted needs now. Straight up, hardcore restriction where he comes face to face with the reality of the choices he was making. Churches are not just spiritual bodies, they are corporations, they're businesses. And you were bad for business. Well, I think if they would have been chess players instead of checkers players, they would have realized that I am their business. Somebody struggling with sin is the purpose that the church is on earth. The church is on earth here to help people with their sin problem. Controversy. Many parents seem content okay, to have so their kids encouraged to take drugs and have indiscriminate sex. It seems to be on TV all the time. Now you just sit here and watch it. That's right. It's been three months now since the Reverend Ted Haggard rocked the evangelical world with his very public fall from grace, and now he's resurfaced. In an email to his former congregation, Haggard, who lost his job in the wake of a sex and drug scandal, said he had completed three weeks of counseling in Phoenix. The treatment was overseen by four ministers, one of whom told the Denver Post that Haggard is now convinced he is, quote, completely heterosexual.